Okay, got the electronics installed now, so uh, we can move on, but let's take a look at what we got here. Um, here's the uh, Zenoa CDI. You want to make sure that uh, you know you run your ground wire over here to the engine block, hook the sensor up, and bring your spark plug cable in. It's probably one of the better places to put it. I'm going to tie wrap that down, I just haven't done it yet. Um, there's the receiver, the gyro, um, all the linkages have been set up now, got all my, my satellite in and stuff like that. So. Uh, I'm also going to put the batteries in back here. That way I can take them in now without having to take the canopy off. And I, these are, I still need to bring the tail servo wire up when I bring the uh, tail servo up and then these are my battery wires here. Um, one thing I like to do too is anything that I'm bringing from the back to the front, I go ahead and put, put them on extension wires, servo extension wires, so that way if I need to remove the front, all I got to do is remove these, break these four joints here and it just comes right off and then I can put it back together. So that's the electronics install that I do. Um, fairly simple and straightforward, nice and clean. It's, you know, everything's going down through the plates, coming up, and keeps it nice and tidy. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the carburetor. And the carburetor goes here on the insulator block. Um, one thing you might want to do here before you install the carburetor is you might want to pull these bolts and put a washer underneath them. Get a four millimeter washer from the hardware store or something like that. And when you do it, pull one out at a time and then seat them back in. That way you don't disturb the uh, the stock gasket that's back there. Um, if you do that and get it shifted, you could create a leak, leak problem back there. So, you know, pull them out one at a time, put them back in. Um, also, while we're doing that, we're going to install the clunk line. Here's some fuel line, and we'll install that as well. Here's the carburetor. I'm just going to use the, the stock uh, velocity stack for now. And then here's the throttle servo arm. Now when we do this throttle servo arm, what we want to do is, you can first thing you can do is you can take this screw out. You're not going to need this anymore. So we can go ahead and remove that, and that will give us our full throttle control. And then what we do, this is where the throttle servo is hooked up up here. You want to put that throttle servo on there, arm on there, and then uh, get your swing so it's, you know, traveling 45 degrees either way or whatever it comes out to be so it's got equal travel either way and that'll make it easier when you set the throttle linkage up later so just kind of just something you kind of have to play with and just kind of get it eyeballed it doesn't need to be perfect um, another thing when I install the clunk line um, this is some black neoprene stuff it works out pretty good but it's you know not very flexible it's still kind of stiff um, you can get wheel collars um, that they use like on plane landing gear and stuff like that and and put it on top of here and that'll give it some extra weight to swing around I've got these brass nuts that come off of compression fittings that end up threading right here on the bottom real nice so that's what I end up using um, other than that we'll go ahead and uh, oh one tool you might want to get for doing this carburetor and anything anytime you need to work on this you might want to get yourself a torque screwdriver um, you can get them anywhere from ten dollars to a hundred dollars I picked this one up at Harbor Freight uh, the reason being is when we crank these things down, this uh, insulator plate, you know, the insulator, and then we put the carburetor on there, there's gaskets in there, and we want to seat those bolts down as evenly as possible. You know, you get that thing crooked just a little bit and you might cause a potential air leak and it'll just wreak you all kinds of havoc when you're trying to tune the engine. So I'm going to go ahead and get that stuff installed and we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, real quick before I put it in, I wanted to show you my... Uh, completed clunk line. It's, uh, you know, just, like I said, just a little bit of that neoprene with uh, that brass fitting on there to help the clunk wall bowl around or whatever. And uh, once it gets some fuel on that line, it tends to loosen up a little bit more. I don't, I didn't put the uh, Z bend in there. I just bend it straight up towards the top of the tank. And so all you want to do is just make sure you get the top of this vent line up at the top of the tank so that fuel don't come running out of it. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in and run the fuel lines. Okay, we got the carburetor installed and the fuel lines run now. Um, got the throttle servo arm on. Um, so basically, th this is pretty straightforward. One line comes in from your clunk into your carburetor. Then you take the vent line off and you want to run it below the bottom of the tank. And then you want it to also stop above the other side of the tank. So that way when you are rolled this way, it can't come out. And when you are inverted, 
it also cannot come out. So you just want to make sure that you know you get your vent line run like that so you don't have those fuel problems, you know, fuel leaking out. But we've got our carburetor in now. And so really all that's left is to you know go ahead and put the landing gear on, mate the tail boom up, put the head on, you know, everything that I've had put aside for video purposes, and then it's pretty much complete. We'll go, you know, I'll do all that and I'll go through my uh, set up one more time to make sure everything's going up and down as it should be and level and and then uh, oh then we still gotta put the muffler on and I'll do that as well just bolt the muffler on uh, just like typically like a nitro kinda except it bolts through the muffler and same deal tighten it up snug and then go out and fly get it heated up and give it a crank and get it ready to go so that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it there. <clears throat> so like I said, I'll go ahead and you know put the finishing touches on here and after that we'll take a look at it in review. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, we're gonna go over setting up the throttle linkage here. It's a little different on uh, setting up a gas or throttle linkage versus the uh, nitros. Um, the first thing you want to do is uh, as I mentioned before, you want to get this throttle arm on the carburetor moving pretty symmetrical you know through center even throws on either side of center so just you know kind of eyeball it get it to where it needs to be then what we're going to do is we're going to set this up so it has a mechanical gain in it um, the the lower end on a the lower end of your throttle on the uh, gas engines is really touchy so we're going to set it up so little bit of with lots of servo movement we're going to get little throttle movement and then it also makes it quicker in the top end so what we do is um, we're going to you need to try and first of all get your throws so you get 100 around 100 percent on either side which is kind of you can kind of get it and you kind of can't so i'll explain here a little better but the first thing you want to do is pull your throttle down to zero and drop your trim now you want this, if you look here, you want this throttle servo arm to be pointing back at the throttle barrel, okay, the throttle servo, or the throttle arm. Now I I don't have it directly back, I've got it down just a little bit, um, I found that worked best for me. Some people say to have it straight back, but um, where I ran into problems is getting it to shut off with my trim, so I just go one notch down from being pointing straight back. So that's where we want our servo arm, that's how we want it positioned on the servo. So that's bottom throttle all the way down, trim all the way down, and then we have it pointing that way. Then the next thing that I do is I go ahead and put my trim back to center, go to full throttle, and then I adjust this link so that when I pull to full throttle, it mates up on there. <clears throat> so yeah, it's probably kind of hard to see here, but you know when I go full throttle, now it's going to sit down on there, and that's now I've got my correct link length. So I'll go ahead and snap that on. Now that that that's how I go about setting mine up. This will pretty much. I found by doing it this way gives you a nice uh, idle somewhere around center trim You may have to go one or two clicks one way or the other depending on your engine You know on how it tunes or whatever, but you're gonna find too that uh, When you bottom out your trim, it's going to bind just a little bit So which is not that big of a deal. Just don't ever drop your throttle all the way down So as you can see, you know now we've got our travel set up That's full throttle and that's should be about idle there and then just drop it a couple of clicks to shut her off so that's how we'll go about so remember we'll go over this one more time you know you want to get your throttle arm positioned so that it bottom stick trim all the way down it's pointing back at the throttle arm then go to full throttle pull this over and adjust your link so that it at full throttle, it's everything's the length the correct length. Get my hand out of the way so you can see that a little better. Then they snap it on, and that should be good to go. So that's how we go about setting up the throttle servo, linkage, and getting everything going. All right, thank you.